Okay, um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, thank you very much for everyone for joining us today. Um, I'd like to welcome our speaker for today, who is John Colpo, um, who's got over 33 years with Honeywell. Um, he's currently Honeywell's principal analyst for the oil and gas markets. Um, as a brief introduction, in the 90s, John led software development for Honeywell's terminal automation software to market leadership in the Asia Pacific region and subsequently globally. And he's also in charge of market analysts for Honeywell's acquisition of NRAF. Um, so I'd like to say a special thank you to John. Um, he, he is up very late uh, this evening for us, so I do appreciate that. Um, and I hope you all enjoy uh, today's um, webinar and I will hand you over to John. Great. Thank you for the introduction, Margaret. Um, and uh, attendees, thank you very much uh, for joining us today on this webinar. Um, I'm sure it will uh, um, uh, provide um, some insights that you'll be able to take forward um, into your business. Um, so uh, I guess Margaret did a pretty good job of introducing myself. I'll talk uh, very briefly about Honeywell uh, and then move on to the webinar. So Honeywell uh, joined oil and gas midstream around 1850 uh, and uh, provides a broad portfolio of tanking terminals and pipelines equipment and software as well as general logistics solutions and retail automation. So key milestones include in the 1950s development of custody transfer tank gauging. Moving forward to the 1970s we developed computer based tank gauging and Honeywell owned Gate City injectors helped introduce third party access and rebranding into the global terminals market beginning in North America and thus kicking off the modern era in terminals operations and management. Logistics is at the very heart of digital transformation of our society with logistics players such as Amazon driving a hollowing out of domestic bricks and mortar retail. Other logistics players like UPS are already deploying autonomous or driverless trucks and the very first robotic autonomous hookups of tanker trucks is being rolled out in a few locations. But the petroleum logistics industry was one of the first um, industries to um, begin digital transformation beginning in the 1980s with transaction brokers like uh, General Electric Tabs and Petroex allowing speedy and automated third party access and accelerating the unbundling of vertically integrated oil companies in North America. But since then, midstream logistics has largely stagnated in many geographies with the majority of terminals around the globe not yet reaching capacity utilization that was seen as standard in North America in the 1990s, even today. And this is largely to do with two factors. Firstly, a slow adoption of third party access uh, around the globe and benchmarking um, this, which is somewhat due to protective government policies and government ownership of the supply chain, such as um, integrated national oil companies. And secondly, a slow uptake of digital transformation and supporting technology. So today we'll check the business background that's driving digital transformation in controlling logistics and then the current state of the art solution architecture that will help you meet global benchmarks in loadouts, tank turns, inventory minimization, minimize exchanges and transmix and so on, while maintaining excellence in compliance, safety, security, and accuracy of fiscal and physical custody transfer, custody transfer records. Sorry, my slides aren't moving. Here we go. Um, yeah, and this is the order we'll do it. So firstly, we'll consider what will be inside a typical uh, digital transformation program. We'll consolidate what we know about trends and economics in controlling logistics, including how digital transformation started in the 1980s after third party access was introduced in North America. Then we'll list the top suggestions from our analysts and voice of customer sessions on how to organize a business for best effect and future proofing. Then jump into the uh, list and delve into the top proven technologies to be aware of for petroleum terminals digital transformation. And we'll reserve a few minutes at the end for question and answer. 
So what's been happening in the technology space? Well, digital transformation is as old as computers and the internet started in the 1970s. So something must have happened recently uh, to make us talk about it so much. And that is the cost and footprint of computing and networking has dramatically reduced at the same time as processing power and bandwidth have increased exponentially. Price drops of 50 times have enabled excess processing, uh, which has itself allowed very greedy virtualization to become usable. And those virtualized computers installed in a data center connected by huge bandwidth, which itself has dropped in price 40 times, is what has created the cloud. Device connectivity. It's hard to imagine any device that is not no long, sorry, that is not connectable any longer, with costs of sensors dropping from $1.13 average in 2004 to about 38 cents today. And now you're getting the picture. Then cybersecurity can't be ignored in a digitally enabled enterprise, but we'll leave that to another opportunity to unpack in detail. But then digital transformation is a process of re-engineering the business of the enterprise that increases the use of technology to better achieve business goals. So obviously technology is subject to business priorities and legacy, and what are they? So digital transformation has matured to a level that programs have, are now well understood um, and frameworks are well understood and can be effectively planned and rolled out. So these five pillars form the broad consensus for structuring an enterprise digital transformation program. Firstly, leadership and effective planning. Successful transformation programs cause radical change to business models and operations. So it goes without saying that program leadership is the first requirement. Secondly, customers' omni experience is often mentioned. Uh, petroleum distribution facilities that are at the top benchmarking do typically have a range of business models with many customers and conversely those at the bottom are often captive within a verti vertically integrated supply chain with only a few customers. Marketing to the broadest range of customers in a full competitive sales environment and ensuring the most positive and efficient experience is critical to business sustainability and performance. Then operating model, to develop flexibility by leveraging digitally connected products services, assets, people, and trading partners. This allows the petroleum logistics enterprise to maintain competitiveness with peers and respond more successfully in dynamic market conditions. Work sourcing, to improve operations by effective sourcing and deployment, integrating both internal and external resources such as staff, contractors, and specialists, and then deploy with collaboration across terminals. This gives you the ability to distribute workflows where they are most efficient and effective, including the outsourcing of both non-core and core functions. And not the least information. Terminals are often considered to be a low value add part of the supply chain and can be poorly invested in. How important is it in logistics to extract and develop the value information relative to customers, markets, transactions, services, product, physical assets and business experiences. Quite a lot as it turns out, as shown by log how logistics businesses have completely disrupted other industries. As we have mentioned, logistics company Amazon replacing your bricks and mortar retail shopping, for example. Now briefly, look, briefly looking at uh, present day business situation, so terminals would generally be counted as essential business and many would also count at the highest standard of critical infrastructure. And we generally anticipate continue operating in conditional modes. So while analyzing pandemic scenarios for our customers, it was determined that there's strong correlation between the after digital transformation modes of operation of a terminal and the mandated requirements for working during elevated biosecurity levels such as social distancing and working from home. So a summary of activities supported by digital transformation in, um, in three main areas um, includes compliance during state of emergency biosecurity levels, including social distancing, work from home and lockdowns through the portability of workstation user interfaces, also supporting auditable evacuations and sanitization of facilities, also providing enablers for remote operations of assets, and collaboration through managed workflows, succession management, and meetings platforms. 
Second group is support for loadout continuity, including the continuation of loadout at lower staffing density with automation and remote operation solutions, remapping to scale back operations, non-restoration, reliable ramp up of capacity utilization. And thirdly, during normal operations, it's possible to, uh, to achieve emergency response planning, which is supported by enabling drills and training of emergency response situations and succession planning of affected staff and contractors. So the following may be well understood by many of today's attendees, but it's worthwhile to make a pass at bringing everyone up to the same level of understanding. So as we all know, gasoline is part of an integrated supply chain beginning at upstream oil fields. So this simplified chart from the um, IEA shows how crude oil is extracted domestically or imported, processed in crude oil refineries, transported by pipeline or tanker to the geography to be consumed, stored in tanks and moved by tanker trucks to gasoline stations where we drive up and fill our personal vehicles. So those of a certain age have noticed that there are many fewer gasoline filling stations than when we were younger, despite there being more cars. Using the US as an example, despite adding uh, 3 million new cars to the fleet each year, the number of gasoline stations actually peaked way back in the 1980s where the number of cars uh, actually is peaking each year. It peaked back uh, then at uh, 200,000 approximate um, uh, gasoline stations. But despite more cars and customers, uh, gasoline stations were closed over time and there are only approximately 120,000 gasoline stations in the US at the moment. But less obvious is the same has actually occurred with marketing terminals. In the US the, um, uh, in the 1980s, there were over 3,000 marketing terminals and that's been reduced to approximately 1,900 today. But how? Well, digital transformation has been a big part of the answer. So traditionally, oil majors have been quietly defocusing uh, gasoline retail for some time now, along with midstream terminals and downstream refining, with some capacity being taken up by logistics players and retail players. So as hinted earlier, first past digital transformation of terminals and pipelines occurred very early in the US in the late 1980s. Uh, and this is the insight that we should heed across the globe. So third party access or TPA became the new business models for terminals that fill trucks that replenish gasoline stations. This began actually early in the 1970s as paper-based transactions as major oil companies believed that duplicating truck filling terminals in each town or county was very inefficient. Also in the 1970s, additive injectors were developed by Honeywell's Gate City, thereby allowing multiple brands of retail to replenish from the same terminal. And in fact, third party access began for pipelines as far back as 1911 in Texas to improve free, trade, free market trade of crude. So having a paper basis at terminals that we didn't own added many minutes of workflow to uh, each truck filling and were particularly more vulnerable to raiding and pilfering. So within a few years, GE provided the transaction broker or brokers that enabled digital transformation of the terminals and midstream business. Uh, the first two were TABS uh, and PetroX. So this enabled an unbundling of previously vertically integrated gasoline industry uh, that, that uh, went from exploration and production all the way through to retail. So now the new retailers could effectively join in the play. And over time, improvements, including integration of biometric security for drivers, uh, RFID tags to identify trucks, tamper-proof custody transfer, process control systems with integrated safety. And then by the 1990s, truck filling of that terminal, which used to take over an hour, uh, would average down to about 20 minutes in, in uh, North America. So the same is now happening around the globe, including geographies with state-owned petroleum companies that are increasingly open up to competition and uh, free market principles, along with unbundling of national companies. So old business models will increasingly no longer work and digital transformation is key to business model flexibility. So let's look at some typical concerns in operating a terminal and where the opportunities are. So let's say we're looking at an average size terminal of four or five tanks, three loading bays, and uh, pipeline transfers in, not, not a marine terminal. 
Um, at each loading bay with bottom loading, uh, we could do maybe three and a half thousand litres per minute for gasoline, and we could expect uh, eight to ten to eleven eight sorry eight to eleven minutes averages from uh, cart in, cart out uh, by the truck driver. So this gives us a theoretical capacity of over 120 trucks per day per bay, or 360 at that terminal with three bays. But around the globe, the average utilisation for that category of terminal is probably much less, probably less than, in fact, 50 versus 360, which leaves a large amount of unused capacity that can be released without spending avoidable capital expenditure or capex. Often it's the business model that's restricting the ability to market the additional capacity, such as no, no wholesalers or no exchanges, no third party access. But also peaky operations and congestion can kill capacity whereas perhaps incentives are the best response. So for example, jobbers may want to load only during business hours, leaving the terminal mostly unused at night. Uh, and that's where incentives could work, for example. Um, terminal management um, is about managing incidents, um, H, uh, health, safety, and environment, operating costs, deployment of corporate strategy, compliance, accounting, alignment with retail, perfecting deliveries and customer satisfaction. Uh, they op manage operations and KPIs subject to corporate strategy and benchmarking. Um, terminal staffing, we often see many staff at such terminals, but since the 1990s, many progressive organizations have been able to operate um, a terminal of that size, unmanned, at least during overnight operations, and make do with only around two staff during office hours. So of course, where there are fewer people, then, there must, then those remaining people must be generalists and simplifications must be made to workflows by increased automation and implementation of progressive techniques such as preventative maintenance, supply chain optimization, and improved security and safety automation. Retail replenishment is a key priority, as that is a key source of corporate income. So effective automation and forecasting needs to be implemented so that there are no stock outs and no returns. We don't have time to talk through all of these in detail, but it's obvious that terminal operations can at best provide a faithful execution of corporate enterprise strategy, and many terminal operations are best handled at the corporate level, leaving automation to handle physical operations as far as possible at the terminal facility. So given our experiences and discussions with terminal owners and our own research, these are our recommendations. So most terminal owners have multiple terminals as well as possible plays in processing, retail and, and distribution. So with the scale providing the opportunity and the critical mass for digital transformation enable improvements. The more terminals, the bigger the opportunity. Enterprise management of operations allows improved operations standardization across terminals, improve response to abnormal situations and market dynamics, and centralizing of skilled resources and much more. Business model review. So adding third party access if not already supported or exchanges with peers may allow you to close some terminals and save those costs. Tolling may improve utilization or return on income on your capital investment on the terminal and so on. Moving on, digital transformation will expand the benefits set up by enterprise, improving the ability to safely demand terminals while actually improving safety and service reliability and making other improvements. A unified and integrated terminals management platform is required to simplify the equipment and technology footprint at terminals where that simplification is required to enable leaner staffing and reduce costs. And not the least in digital transformation programs, leverage your terminals and your enterprises data collection and aggregation capabilities to convert that data to real time KPI calculations and actionable insights to foster continuous benchmarking improvements. So the first phase is to simplify. How do we do that? So most terminals that operate today were built several decades ago when terminals were part of an integrated supply chain company. They often seen as low value add component of the business due to the perception of simplicity of the process and low opportunity for any upside and can suffer from low investment and focus. Terminals however are the cash register 
and they provide a key opportunity for both upside and downside. Security and accuracy of custody transfer is core, noting that threats can arise from both outside and inside. Hazardous material products mandate careful handling and compliance balanced against the pressure to reduce cost and staffing. So in fact, it turns out to be a large number of dynamic systems in a terminals, be they small terminals, large or complex, that require a level of automation or require a, a manual handling or both. And accordingly, there's both pressure to de-staff terminals to at least partially unmanned operations to achieve cost benchmarks and uh, health uh, HSC KPIs, while there is pressure to increase activities required for compliance, for example, adding vapor recovery, um, adding biofuel strategies, adding custody, you know, improving custody transfer accuracy, accuracy and so on, and business models such as increased loadouts and transfers. With both pressures counter to each other, it makes sense to operate as much as possible in an automated fashion, that is without human intervention, and to operate remotely where skilled staff and, and contractors can be deployed across multiple terminals. So lean staffing strategies then, being partially unmanned at terminals but with high complexity of business models and activities, indicates a requirement for an integrated terminal management, terminal automation system, I should say, that has a broad coverage and seamless interfaces to many other systems in order to simplify operations to a manageable level. So here is Honeywell's proven solution to that problem. Leveraging its award-winning Experion PKS as the platform, Terminal Manager has been redeveloped in recent years to meet the business models and performance requirements of all petroleum terminals around the globe. Most all automation and automated equipment that you'll find in a terminal is part of Honeywell's portfolio. Not only the presets, injectors, blenders, and card readers in the loading bays, but also the entire bottom loading gantry can be provided by Honeywell, along with associated systems to manage safety shutdowns, fire and gas, digital CCTV surveillance, including thermal and radar, along with physical security, uh, cybersecurity, access control, and extending all the way through to replenishment and truck fleet management. Experion's distributed system architecture framework allows other applications such as security and uh, buildings or facilities management systems to appear as part of the core system, sharing tags, alarms, displays, and other dynamic and master data. Honeywell's terminal, terminal manager is the gold standard in terminal automation that can take complex operations and make them simple to manage. Terminal manager is key to achieving world benchmarks in gate to gate times, loading times, inventory minimization and turnover, terminal capacity utilization, HSC uh, KPIs while supporting demanding. So there are four main basic building blocks of Terminal Manager that have devolved over a period of time addressing various customer needs. So firstly, Terminal Manager addresses the needs of the actual local terminal, and that's the core, um, central core of the system. Next, um, many terminal owners um, wanted to have a consolidated view of local terminals at the corporate level, and there evolved the system enterprise version of Terminal Manager. Then owners wanted to give um, access to their external stakeholders, such as jobbers and other customers. So there evolved a web portal application to service um, the various stakeholders. And finally, um, many terminal operators wanted to give access to the drivers and carrier companies uh, to book their slots before arriving at the, uh, the terminals to avoid congestion and to achieve quicker turnaround time. So there evolved the slot booking application um, that is available for truck drivers on there mobile uh, HMIs. So Terminal Manager runs at uh, level two layer of terminal and Enterprise runs at the level four layer for those familiar with the Purdue model of enterprise automation. Uh, both are internet applications not available for external access, whereas the web portal and slot booking applications are internet facing applications uh, for external world over secure network access to do their daily uh, operations. Terminal Manager is a modern, um, end-tier architected application where the server parts 
run on Microsoft Windows and support multiple HMIs, including thin web clients and mobile mobile HMIs, such as um, iPads and uh, smartphones. Optional support for virtualization and cloud hosting are built in. It handles transfers, receipts, dispatches, and returns at petroleum um, uh, the terminals, including uh, products such as um, pressurized products, uh, cryogenic and gaseous phase products, as well as um, light oils and uh, heated products. Terminal Manager uses Experian as its backbone for all the SCADA and uh, distributed control system, or DCS, operations to connect with other subsystems like safety shutdown systems, access control, security, CCTV, fire and gas, and so on. Terminal Manager supports both volume and weight-based loading and unloading. It integrates with ERP systems such as SAP, um, with standard interfaces like web services, um, XML, and so on, um, and has uh, integrated with most ERP systems like JD Edwards, um, Microsoft Dynamics, Vega. Um, it has uh, tabs, PetroX, and, and uh, PIDX uh, interfaces, um, uh, and can exchange both master data and transactional data with those systems. Um, for enterprise-wide integration of operations across multiple terminals, um, the solution is Honeywell's Terminal Manager Enterprise node. So there we can, we can integrate the operations of multiple terminals and apply consistent and standard practices across them. It becomes possible to quickly see how each terminal is performing and which have got spare slots and which need uh, direct attention or intervention. So products lifted at one terminal are automatically rec recorded on a bill of lading at the enterprise level so that the same order cannot be processed in another terminal at the same time. So that improves security and prevents coordinated uh, rack rating. Um, an incident at one terminal can be seen at the enterprise level where emergency response services can be quickly activated and carriers redirected to another terminal, including exchanges. Resources from one terminal can readily be sent to help out where shortages have occurred. Uh, Honeywell's Enterprise Terminal Manager solves most of the issues discussed in the terminal challenges by aggregating and consolidating details from each individual terminal and presenting them in a concise dashboard for immediate decision making. So account staffs at corporate to headquarter level uh, need to consolidate the details from each uh, terminal to build customers. So this is both time consuming and error prone uh, and uh, delays can occur in invoicing and balancing um, causing loss of revenues and so on. So now with Enterprise Node, it's all simplified uh, with a click of a button. Um, Customer-wise, shareholder-wise, delivery and receipts are known uh, and can be billed and uh, invoices validated much more quickly. Um, also important is that master and transactional data is synced up from the Enterprise Node to each individual terminal and any, any changes at the local terminals also get reflected at the enterprise node. So there's one version of the truth and no mistakes. Um, other peer terminals are, already have data sanity across sites and also at the enterprise node level. So this happens uh, seamlessly across the sites at the database infrastructure level. Terminal Manager Enterprise provides improved inventory information and demand forecasting so that terminal operators can be active rather than passive in scheduling and incentivized lifting orders and other activities. In case of abnormal situation or maintenance, immediate response can be made for re-rating, redirection or rescheduling of lifting. Data analytics and mining insights, um, um, benchmarking which sites uh, performance is at best, which sites are underperforming, which terminals uh, have the least downtime, and which terminals are uh, uh, servicing the customers best can be all identified quickly. Operation workflows can be streamlined and rolled out across the terminals in a cookie cutter fashion. Um, what is time tested and proven in one terminal can easily be rolled out in other similar terminals so that operational resources can be mobilized to handle any terminal remotely in case of shortage of workforce or ad hoc situations. Terminals can also be on continuous improvement mode um, as, as they get consolidated at one single location at enterprise level. 
Multi-terminal operators can consolidate investment on ERP or um, third-party uh, brokers like TABS, TDS, integration, each individual level. It's all taken because it's all taken care of at the enterprise level. Um, and so you need one connection, thus saving cost, time and effort involved. Um, so also importantly is that uh, drivers also have an interface into terminal manager. So drivers will be able to book their slots and visit terminal to minimize waiting time um, by looking at the um, sort of operational uh, peaks of particular terminals and um, which supports uh, incentives and pay by activity strategies. Um, in the slide, the, the top row um, shows the current uh, situation. The bottom row shows the future. So as is and to be. Um, so you can see um, perhaps um, we've, uh, our marketing communications folk uh, may have uh, taken some old pictures here. We, we seem to put a top loading tanker truck as uh, from the 1980s into the future, but um, we'll get that corrected uh, in the next uh, version of this webinar, I guess. And um, I think that truck driver should not be using his phone if he's driving, I can't quite tell. Um, anyway, um, lots of benefits there for the um, truck driver to um, get a lot more uh, trips in. Um, and um, if they're on a pay by trip scheme, um, they will certainly uh, appreciate that user interface. Um, so terminals have always been targets uh, for organized crime from both within um, the organization um, and you know, external organized crime, um, sometimes uh, both sides colluding. Um, so uh, from many strategic objectives such as critical infrastructure basis and business continuity planning and avoiding cyber-based pilfering raids, it's necessary to achieve high standards of cybersecurity at terminals and at corporate locations. So Honeywell provides a range of services, features and technology to improve cyber security and responses, including um, cyber security built into the product during product development, authentication management solutions, both at workstations, uh, operating system level and um, persona logins um, um, on the uh, workstations and HMIs of Terminal Manager. Um, we provide systems to ensure proper, proper configuration, patch management and antivirus management. Um, we help with uh, attack service area minimization, application whitelisting. Uh, we provide or help you set up secure remote access. Um, and we can provide um, cyber risk manager and industry first which is a, a real-time cyber risk monitoring and response um, software solution. Um, Honeywell also offers end-to-end -end solution for security systems right from the entry of a terminal um, to the main control room. Experion's industrial security is our core platform that's fully and seamlessly integrates uh, all aspects of security solution for both onshore and marine side facilities. Um, in, uh, Experion in, uh, Integrated Security also delivers some advanced features like fatigue management and contractor management by integrating into the um, uh, ERPs, human resources systems. Working in layers, the technology extends uh, beyond the perimeter with radar video surveillance and solutions to protect long linear assets such as pipelines. Uh, replacing traditional CCTV cameras for long perimeter with um, radar provides early warning of intrusion activities uh, and helps to track an intruder and provides extended monitoring outside regular boundary lines. Uh, around the per physical perimeter, um, Honeywell works with uh, a best in class perimeter intrusion detection or, or TPI, third party intrusion uh, detection companies to ensure the combination of technologies meets the individual site requirements <clears throat> uh, ranging from fiber optic sensors installed on fences and underground uh, and through to a wide range of product lines can be designed based on the type of physical fence. 
Lighting is often forgotten, but can be an excellent deterrent when integrated to security technology. Illuminating a zone that has a security alarm can be sufficient to deter any unwanted activities. Um, optimal fire and gas protection is essential in tank and storage areas where the protection of personnel, assets and the environment has always been uh, the highest priority. Honeywell's fire and gas offering for terminal applications combines state-of-the-art technologies with products and solutions seamlessly integrated with our world-class process automation and control system experience. Honeywell's uh, integrated fire and gas solutions include fire alarm detection, uh, gas and flame detection, fire and gas controllers, safety shutdown controllers for automatic activation of safety related um, uh, emergency, um, uh, PA and VA systems, fire suppression, process monitoring. I'm just checking how we're going for time. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, portable gas detection and all this integrated into the Experion um, PKS platform, which is the foundation for Terminal Manager. So Honeywell is the uh, one-stop shop in fire and gas. Uh, when critical safety or uh, security events occur, making the right decision under pressure can meet the difference, meet the difference between a minor inconvenience and major downtime. So often uh, um, for major incident control rooms, uh, command wall provides the right information to managers and key stakeholders to increase business continuity while allowing first responders to reduce risk to plant and personnel through digital standard operating procedures. Uh, emergency response functionality helps reduce risk and promotes accuracy when an incident occurs. Uh, command and control suites ease of use allows you to easily demonstrate security, safety and readiness to respond. Uh, and the drills module enables regular training of a small scale control room exercises using the full system capability. One specific application that could be very attractive for terminals is our personal gas safety system. If there are less workers going to be at each terminal in the future, then it'll be imperative to make sure that the central coordination center is able to monitor the health of workers at each of the local terminals. Personal gas safety is an integrated solution that takes wearable gas detectors and connects them back to the coordination, um, uh, to the central coordination center directly to the alarm console. So we can support a broader range of field devices and they can connect back by any combination of radio, Wi-Fi, cellular network, Bluetooth, or robust wireless mesh to Experion or Terminal Manager. So this makes data integration much easier and reduces the engineering effort of implementation. The Honeywell One wireless terminal solution um, reduces a lot of cost, typically up to 50% relative to traditional wiring of instruments such as level gauges for inventory, uh, overfill, alarming and more. Another benefit is that project ex execution typically will be completed in just one fifth of the time relative to, tradi to traditional wiring. Next, the one wireless terminal solution, um, by leveraging the same one wireless network caters to um, cost efficiency, adding solutions to enhance plants, plant uh, terminal safety and personal safety, um, increase uptime of assets such as vibration monitoring, supporting uh, vibration monitoring, I should say, um, and operator and maintenance engineer efficiency with mobile stations. So lead staffing um, strategies require that staff become more generalists, for example, performing both maintenance and operation activities. Uh, and those staff require support through automation and um, experts on call. So implementing Honeywell's intelligent wearables provides the support needed. The wearable unit provides a video presentation, video camera, sound, microphone, uh, instruments such as um, uh, GPS, um, accelerometers and so on, and wireless communications. Um, current software uh, offerings are listed at the right, uh, including step-by-step um, -step automated operator rounds, um, maintenance procedure assistance, um, uh, remote expert on demand, 
real-time video recording uh, and sh uh, procedures sharing, uh, real-time visit visualization of the um, terminal manager um, workstation and HMI, and uh, access to documentation to corporate documentation systems. Um, so with this online support, the lean staffing strategies can operate at competency and safety levels as required by such a hazard material, um, hazardous material and high activity industry. Um, also maintenance is a key business function in terminals and comes at uh, quite a large operating cost. In most um, um, upstream and midstream oil and gas facilities, the maintenance and reliability department is uh, usually the largest headcount with um, a lot of activity such as inspections resulting in um, no benefit or action. And so modern approaches such as predictive maintenance are required to reduce headcount, uh, reduce costs and improve asset reliability. With fewer terminals in um, third party access locations, reliability, um, you know, service reliability is even more critical. Uh, so uh, just seeing if we have time for a mini course on maintenance. Um, I think so. So um, this is what typically happens. Each terminal, um, each equipment item at a terminal is assessed to give and given one of four types of maintenance strategies. Uh, so one is fixed time, also known as preventative. So that is uh, periodical run hours in, in your automobile. This would be changing the oils, for example, every 12 months or 10,000 kilometers. Uh, so this is somewhat effective, but is wasteful. Um, there's on, uh, on failure strategy, so this is okay for the light bulbs in your car or at home, but it's not okay for your engine's oil change uh, as it may damage your engine. Uh, design out as a third strategy. This is why Dyson brand of vacuum cleaners cost more than others. Um, and the final and best is predictive maintenance. And um, as an example, this is how you deal with tires. You estimate the last possible moment uh, you continuously inspect them and estimate the last possible moment. You can replace those tyres before an accident occurs. Uh, um, and you know this is the most cost-effective and reliable means of maintaining equipment where it can be done, and it can't necessarily be done with all equipment. Um, but there are two main problems or challenges in large-scale rolling out of predictive maintenance. So the first is that um, the condition of equipment is not obvious and, sen and, and therefore we need to install sensors and devices um, to measure uh, such parameters as corrosion, vibration, um, filter, differential pressure and so on. Um, and secondly, the conventional um, CMMS, the Computerized Maintenance Management System that manages all the workflows and documentation for your maintenance department, uh, often part of your ERP, um, those CMMS systems don't really know how to handle those measurements. Uh, and that's where predictive maintenance module of Terminal Manager comes in. Um, it collects sample measurements from devices and manual observations and inputs these into models of equipment thermodynamics and, and uh, into equipment fault models and recommends the best course of action via notification or works order triggers to the CMMS. So then the CMMS can then manage the set of workflows that's been optimized by terminal managers, um, APM module or um, asset performance management module. There we go. Um, so if the user is uh, an operator or terminal shift su supervisor, they might see a view that looks uh, a little bit more like this one. This view allows the terminal operator to see what the most recent shift looked like. It shows what the demand looks like in each bay and what's the demand for that day. Um, uh, what's loading and unloading, which bays are busy, which bays are empty, how many trucks are queued per bay, uh, and what is uh, each uh, individual vehicle's loading time, how long uh, drivers are spending um, on average in a bay to find problem drivers and good drivers as well, um, um, product leakage and, and so on, all in one single screen for the operator to analyze performance at the terminal. Um, another um, 
another uh, um, uh, valuable um, analytics screen here is here we can see more data that may be of interest, uh, including average uh, bay utilization, the average number of loads picked up in a day and the distribution of products. Um, or on the right hand side, the average wait time in each terminal so that the dispatchers can see which is the best terminal to direct a carrier to. Um, at the same time, data can be shared across multiple mobile devices securely over the internet. So this means an operator at one of the terminals can see the uh, performance of his own terminal, uh, even from <clears throat> the enterprise node of um, terminal manager. So we're seeing more oil and gas logistics players are moving <clears throat> towards cloud hosted solutions to save cost and simplify operational headaches and take advantage of the opportunity for outsourcing and business continuity provided by the um, omnipresence of um, the internet and, and cloud hosted systems. So with Honeywell's terminal manager, cloud hosting is available for core and enterprise systems um, or uh, even hybrid installations are available. So Honeywell hosting or private clouds can be approved. So we're reaching the end. So in summary, um, uh, we recommend that enterprise-wide digital transformation enables better operating modes and these are not otherwise achievable in legacy terminals. Um, we suggest um, that uh, logistics, um, patrol logistics should prepare for further midstream industry unbundling, especially in geographies that uh, haven't uh, done this yet, um, and to um, embrace proven um, internet of things enhanced solutions or connected solutions. Uh, we recommend leveraging of um, inter um, IoT infrastructure for expanded expanding your business models and improving the capacity utilization of your terminals. Um, leverage multi-site terminal solutions to continuously improve operations, standardize operations uh, and cost takeout. Um, in order to achieve that, we would need to simplify uh, system complexity at the uh, um, sort of lean man, lean man terminals with an integrated terminal management, automation and security framework. Uh, and all, and um, finally, um, to implement uh, predictive maintenance to improve uptime and reduce maintenance costs. Um, so we've reached the final slide here. Um, so in a second, we'll open up for questions. Um, uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce um, some contacts if we have follow-ups, um, we can contact myself um, uh, or uh, closer to your to your region, the Americas, we can contact Anil. Um, so this um, uh, these email addresses uh, are available on our um, uh, recording um, of this session. Um, so for the Americas, Anil, uh, for Europe, Middle East and Africa, for Roz, um, Asia and Pacific, uh, Chris, uh, and for Global, uh, Chad and myself, uh, your contacts. Um, just on the right hand side here, just uh, offering a view of um, what could be happening uh, for midstream logistics um, in the near future. We may see Driverless trucks, they're already being um, rolled out in, in conventional um, retail logistics. We should expect to see them in, in, on tanker trucks as well as um, those in sometime soon. And um, the next step um, at the loading bay is the um, robotic gantry there, uh, robotic loading arm, I should say. Um, so that's a, a prototype that's actually in use uh, at an airport. Um, in Russia. So the uh, future is um, uh, going to bring some further changes to the midstream uh, logistics industry. Um, so Margaret, I, I might pause. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much, John. That was a really comprehensive presentation. I, and I really enjoyed it. 
glimpse into the future there and some really interesting points specifically about the wearable technology. I thought that was fascinating. Um, so as John mentioned, we do have a few moments now um, to take any questions. Um, if you'd like to submit a question, we've had a few in, um, but feel free to um, submit any more um, via the question um, uh, panel on your, on your screen. Um, so John, I've got a couple um, that I've had in here that I'll, um, I'll ask you. Um, so when is a good time to upgrade the automation at a terminal and how long does it take to take the terminal offline? Um, well, uh, that, that's a good question. Yeah, um, so two questions there. So um, when's a good time? So typically when the business model changes and that can be something that is um, decided by the enterprise itself. Like, uh, let's say, you know, we want to introduce third party access or it could be um, an, in response to a, a government regulation. Um, so uh, maybe, um, you know, the government is, you know, uh, you know the biofuels blending um, regime was the example or, or, or perhaps going further back in time, the addition of vapor recovery units uh, and vapor recovery at the tanker trucks um, um, would have been a good time to um, upgrade terminal automation. Um, if done carefully, the second part of the question, um, if done carefully, um, it can be done without completely uh, um, shutting down the capacity of the terminal uh, because each loading bay is relatively independent. Um, so the, the um, newer instance of the terminal automation system can be given control over one bay, for example, and once that's tested and proven, it can be given a second bay and so on, while the legacy system is still controlling the, um, um, the bays that are the not under control of the new system. So there are techniques that can allow for, um, um, uh, and it is achievable, we have done it, uh, for no downtime at a terminal, if that answers the question. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, okay, next question. Um, somebody has asked, can we integrate drones for inspection to avoid having people in confined spaces? Uh, the general answer is, is yes. Um, that's... Uh, that's again a, a good question. It's, a, um, it's making me think. Um, the drones, um, uh, in confined spaces. Yeah, okay, I have, to, I have to admit it's a bit beyond me to know whether we we can uh, support drones in confined spaces, given that they're generally designed for moving you know across um, large areas and and so on so we do deploy uh, drones for inspections um, of pipelines for example um, so that's not really confined space um, um, so um, that is an industry available system and, and Honeywell does have um, part of its business that specialize in drone services that can inspect terminals and uh, pipelines um, um, but I'm not sure about confined spaces. I'll have to take that on. Uh, yeah, if we could take um, uh, some contact details there, I'll get our um, 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 a UAV specialist to have a look at that question and, and get back to us. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, yes, I mean, if there are any um, unanswered questions at the end of the session, people are, are welcome to email them anyway, and, and they can have a, um, their answers, quest um, their questions answered. Um, so another one um, we've been asked is, can the Honeywell terminal manager do pipelines, or do we need a separate pipelines SCADA to do the batch tracking and pig tracking? Ah, yeah, um, sure, yes. Uh, so, yes, so the the platform that um, Honeywell's Terminal Manager sits on is Experion, um, which uh, does include full um, SCADA capability, um, including, you know, integration of um, RTUs, remote terminal units and PLCs and so on. And it does include a full suite of applications for managing pipelines. So, 
you know, for gas pipelines that includes um, um, you know, tracking gas quality, um, calculating line pack and so on, and for refinery products and crude pipelines, um, it, it includes batch tracking um, uh, and leak detection in both cases and so on. So the answer is um, yes. And again, if that person would like more information, they can contact us and, and we'll make sure to uh, get some more details across. Okay, thank you. Um, somebody else has asked about wireless sensors, asking how live is the data? Um, how live the if if that means um, how how instant or what's the response time? Um, it's it's quite um, instant and it, uh, it's quite instant and to the point that um, there are emerging standards even for cell rated. Uh, safety systems to be communicated over wireless, um, you know, up to SIL 3 and even SIL 4. So, um, um, I, if, I, if I'm answering that question correctly, I, I'd say that the, the wireless instrumentation um, typically responds in the fractions of a second um and doesn't um you know and, and typically uh, that instrumentation is not used in closed loop control um, um and, and hence doesn't affect any lag uh doesn't affect any uh, control loops um so it should be available fairly instantly to uh, anywhere within the terminal or even um again within fractions of a second at the corporate level Okay, makes sense. Um, next question is, um, how do you standardize terminals if the operations are different to terminals? Ah, that's, that's a very good question as well. Yes, um, good questions. Um, okay, so, so an enterprise has multiple terminals. Um, you know, let's say there's a refinery, several refineries, and then, um, you know, large complex terminals at the refineries next to offsites, and they may have things like, um, Asphalt, for example, um, which um, you know is maybe being taken off in rail or ship, and further downstream, there are at the end of a pipeline, there are um, you know other marketing terminals that um, only have light products. So that's a fairly typical configuration. So the the um, gold standard for um, standardizing multiple terminals is to um, is to basically mock up a, a perhaps a fictional terminal, which is a superset of all the products and workflows that is available um, across that enterprise's or that corporation's terminal. So make up mock up a um, an imaginary terminal that's um, got all the complexities and all the workflows of all the terminals that they have. Um, and use that to set the standards and workflows and to perhaps optimize workflows, um, you know, ideally be prepared to improve and change some uh, workflows to get to the standard. Um, but that standard can then be uh, rolled out in its subsets um, to each terminal. That's, okay, thank um, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we've probably got time for one more question. Is your solution able to provide prescriptive and prognostic prog prognostic maintenance? Pres Pres prescriptive. Oh, that's prescriptive and prog. Okay, we'd probably reached the limit of what I know about predictive <laughs> maintenance. Me, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I would hazard yes, but um, if I could take the contact details. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. But to our, uh, we um, we certainly um, have been um, you know leaders in that uh, um, predictive maintenance um, area with um, um, you know quite sort of extensive modelling of, of you know fault modelling and thermodynamic modelling of you know all sorts of um, you know rotating equipment you know pumps and compressors and so on uh, for quite a few years. So I. I I would hazard it's a it's a yes answer, but uh, again, I'll we'll have to get to the experts and get back. To that yes, question. certainly. <laughs>
Perfect. All right. Well, I think that's um, all the time that we have. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for everyone um, who sent questions in. Apologies, we haven't had a chance to address them all. As, as I mentioned, um, John or one of his colleagues um, will be able to respond um, to questions um, at a later date. Um, you are also uh, welcome to download this presentation and watch it back. Um, so um, send uh, myself an email, that's margaret at tankstoragemag.com and we can arrange that for you um, and you'll be sent a link afterwards. So I'd like to say a very uh, big thank you on behalf of Tank Storage Magazine um, to John and to Honeywell for today's uh, webinar. Um, and yes, uh, we will um, be in touch soon. Thank you very much.